Well, you know, the first thing I thought that Jody was the last person in that courtroom before the jury. And when she came in, she turned around and she looked and smiled at her family, a nice confident smile and a very strange thing to do when your life is held in the balance the next minute. Then you heard that then the jury walked in and they looked down at their feet. It's a, a telltale sign, but I've never seen a jury in 30 years look quite so far down at their feet. Wouldn't look at her. And then these strange things with Jody Arias tweets we've talked about uh, with Jody Arias allegedly making a Cecilia necktie sign. And now this interview after, it's bizarre. Uh, nobody, nobody, the day before uh, the uh, sentencing phase says, kill me. Mm. Gene Casares, as Jeff talks about that, the confidence smile, you know what else that I saw after the verdict was read? She wheeled around and I believe looked at her family. I think it was the most... Uh, obvious look at her family I think that I've seen yeah. in this entire case. Did you pick up on that? I agree. I agree completely. I saw that myself. She has not looked at her family during the course of this trial. She's been focused talking with Jennifer Wilmot, listening to the testimony, but she hasn't really turned around and communicated with her family. But I saw it at that pivotal moment right there. You, you know, I think it is amazing that that shortly after this verdict, she says to the world that she wants death and i just wonder if there will be any legal issues raised because of that with her defense team today because she still needs to be competent to aid and assist her lawyers and there may be a creative argument there that her competency should be tested real quick gene there were some reports that she was upset with her lawyers potentially yelling at her lawyers after the verdict we ever get any confirmation on that it's been a lot of talk. Okay. As far as confirmation, I don't think anyone wants to speak on it, but it does make some rational sense at that moment, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. All right, let's bring in Anita Kay again, former sex crimes prosecutor, and we talk about that. Anita, help us out here as we wonder, you know, Jody Arias' mindset, and she's saying she wants the death penalty. I mean, how could that all figure in here? And, and could that tape, could that part of that interview be heard in court? Well, you know, it, it, it goes to show maybe that's one of the reasons why Kurt Nurmi wanted to get out of the case uh, when he left the public defender's office. I mean, look, this is a difficult client. He said so uh, at closing. It was stricken from the record, but he said nine out of ten times, I don't like Jody Arias. Well, I guess we know why. No lawyer wants their client right after a conviction to go on air and say these crazy kind of things. But, hey, the cards are hers. She doesn't have to put on mitigation. She doesn't have to do it at all. Let her put up or shut up. She, she doesn't want it. She doesn't have to put any mitigation. We'll be done in a half a day today with aggravation and she can tell her lawyers she doesn't want to go any further and as pointed out they can have a waiver and that and be done with it let her put it up or shut up yeah you know in a part of this interview and we'll try and find that for you is again she trashes travis alexander uh saying in this interview after the verdict you can uh she said she wanted to plea because she wanted his murky life hidden that now everybody sees the hypocrisy that he was living the life of a hypocrite that's where she went no remorse. That's where she went. Went right after Travis Alexander. So much to take in. Want to get you. Yeah, well, I'm vacillating between whether it's all just a bunch of BS, more manipulation, everything out of her mouth is some form of manipulation, or because of some of the things that have happened at the end of the case that really seem a little crazy, whether she's getting crazy. However, I don't think the suicide watch means a whole lot. Uh, a, a defendant in this circumstance, uh, given the potential a sentence, is often put in some form of suicide watch. It happens in many, many cases. I remember as recently in Sandusky, we had the same report mm -hmm. after uh, uh, his. So it, it, I, I'm not so shocked by that at all. I, I don't know if she's BSing or uh, really is, is crazy, but I don't think it's going to help her. Okay, letting everybody know within the next well, hour. Well, that's just what you have to do. You have to humanize her. You have to have a, a, at least a juror, so they'll hang at very least. Uh, and you hope to convince all of them that there are some redeeming value, some redeeming value in Jody Arias. I mean, in order to uh, impose the death penalty, a jury really has to think this is a worthless uh, person. Uh, it may be worse than that, maybe evil. Um, and then, you, and then you, you put him to death. But if you can convince them as a defense attorney that regardless of what they found out happened uh, in June of 2008, that before that and after that she has redeeming qualities, you can put on her first grade teacher, the you know, Girl Scout uh, 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 leader, uh, her mom, her grandmom, uh, all those things. I mean, you know, psychologist, you mm -hmm. do all those things to show she's a human being and doesn't deserve to die. Anita Kay, again, former sex crimes prosecutor. So what we get